Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. I'm just sitting out here in my personal space, not really doing much at all. I'm holding a, a no name knife I bought off of eBay. Um, I think it's from Pakistan or someplace like that. It's supposed to have D2 steel in it. Um, just a real nice compact blade. I showed you before. It's supposed to have um, dyed giraffe bone scales on it. <laughs> Whether it does or not, I have no idea. That's just what it, how it was advertised. Real, it came with a real nice sheath, real nice hard sheath. I liked it because it had a short blade. I thought it would be a perfect little bushcraft uh, carving knife and stuff like that. That was before I got into the... Um, Scandy grinds, but uh, I still think no. And, and, but this is this might be kind of a, a weird thing to ask you guys, but you know, there's a lot of knife maker guys out there. No, a Scandy, a true Scandy grind, like on a Mora knife, is just bevel to bevel to a point, right? A true one. If you look at a, I've looked at, I've looked at the the Mora's with a magnifying glass and there's and there's the ones I have have no no other little micro bevel on them or anything like that They're, it's just a straight down to the V period why couldn't like just a regular knife like this with a nice a nice flat a flat grind like this why, why can't this be ground even on both sides so that the two sides meet wouldn't that be basically a Scandi grind but it wouldn't be it wouldn't have the taper of a of a more and like that you know the the V wouldn't go out so far but maybe may, I don't know maybe that it, that would make the edge too weak or something maybe that's why people don't do it I don't know I have, I have a couple knives in the house like the uh, um, I have the K bar the USMC K bar design which is made I have mine is made by Camillus and uh, now I have that knife ground down uh, I, I I tried sharpen I couldn't get an edge on it for nothing and I sharpened it down to I think I think that's what I have on mine. I have mine to where it meet the the edges meet in the center, off the off the bevel, and it's you know it's shaving sharp. I've never given any big tests like an all day all day test outside, whittling and, and stuff like that. It does beautiful feather sticks and stuff like that. I've never tested it for an hour or two or three hours to see how long to see how long the the edge lasts. Someone's out there down below. My dogs never bark because there's not someone around. Um, that's just a simple question. I, I don't. I, I'm not a knife. I'm not a knife expert. I, just, I know I love knives, and I have enjoyed my more knives. I was looking at. I wanted to buy a knife this year with a Scandi grind on it that wasn't a Mora. That one. I wanted a knife kind of like this right here, similar to this, but with a little, with a, a five-inch blade or four-inch blade with a wood handle was what I was shooting for and I've looked at a dozen of them um, online and then I, I looked at the videos on each one of the knives like like Camillus is making a nice bushcraft knife um, CRKT makes one Condor makes one but when I looked at the pictures on Amazon where you can you know you click on it and it makes the picture bigger or when you when you go over with your mouse the picture gets bigger. Every one of them has a, a scanty grind, but every one of their scanty grinds has a micro bevel on it. So I don't, I don't see how that's a scanty grind. Just because it has a big, just because it has a, a big short taper on it, they're calling it a scanty grind, which I think is totally wrong. Where you do the same thing with that same picture on Amazon on Amora, you don't, you don't, you do not see that little micro bevel on the bottom of them. Just, just, just a, just that's just a simple question. I don't know. The other thing I was going to show you was I've got this little thing here. I've been, I've been kind of carrying around with me for quite a while. I finally got it all together into a, a nice little group. Let me move a little closer to you. Oh my goodness. Now I've, I've showed this several times. This is my little gouge. It's a little, a little German gouge. Um, I have a heck of a time sharpening gouges, so I just ground it back and forth on a um, 
sharpening stone, which I guess is what you're supposed to do. And then I buffed, I buffed it to death with the cloth buffer. And it's pretty sharp. Um, it should, could be a little sharper, I think, but it's pretty sharp, though. And a little short handle. You can put your palm in it. It gives you real good control. I use it for doing my, my divots or whatever you want to call it on my, on my uh, hearth boards. And then I just I kind of make put it around. I make like a circle with it. And then I just work that back and forth to just kind of drill it out. In about 20 seconds, I have a eighth inch deep divot to, to start my uh, uh, bow drill fire to get it ready to burn in. And then I have a just a real simple, this is a ha piece of half inch PVC that I heated up. CPVC, that's all we have here in the Philippines. We don't have real PVC. Real thin walled. And it, as soon as you heat it up, the second time you try to heat it up, it cracks real bad. But I just I have it here so it just it just fits in snug. You know, it's a real nice little deal. And then I put on a a lanyard. Let's see if I can get this off. I put on a lanyard on it. And right now I also have a um, I put my ferro rod on here and uh, the striker. Get it all off once I can show you what I got. Okay. So I have the gouge, simple sheath, just two little holes in the back, running through a lanyard. Always put a lanyard knot on the end. Don't need a stoop, you know, a simple overhand knot. This is good, but this looks better. Then I also put on most of my lanyards. I put on what's called a barrel knot. I don't know if you guys know the barrel knot. It's similar to a whipping. But it has, it has an end going out both sides, and you, you wrap it. You, you, what you do is you make a, uh, I guess I should do a video on it. I take my finger with a piece of paracord, say it going sticking out here this way, sticking out this way. I wrap it around my finger loosely, seven, six, seven, eight times, five times, whatever you want. And then, actually, have, actually have you have a piece of paracord running this way. And then you start right here. No, you start you start down at this end down here, and you 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 wrap 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 around your finger nice and loose. And you get down to this end, you take your your end, and you go all the way back through inside the hole, and then slowly slowly tighten it up. And what it'll do is it'll tighten up from both ends, and you'll get this really nice tight thing, and then burn off both ends. And then you have this really tight barrel knot that slides back and forth, so you can adjust different things if you wanted to. And I've never really used them for much, besides maybe adjusting the length of it or something like that, the total length. But what I've been doing now is I have a... Here's my striker, and I saw the video the other day where I made... Um, I uh, reverse twisted a, a cord for it made out of uh, jute twine. It's very nice. So now what I do is I just take through the lane through the the the, the loop fob whatever you want to call it. I take the lanyard through that. Now you think that's pretty good. That'll stay on there. But what if it what if it went over the the head or whatever? It fall off. So when I get down here by the the barrel knot, I take the the tool and I put it through the loop like this. Okay. Now the loops wrapped around the. The lanyard cord so there's no way that it can come out do the same I do the same thing with my ferro rod this is my firesteel.com ferro rod that I that I carry and I the same thing I just putting it I'm putting it through the the little lanyard thing I got here and when I get down here I'll I just tuck it in this hole here drop it in there and you can see how it see how it just kind of shoulders itself going down it almost looks like a, a square knot that sits down there nice and tight and then so that it can't pop off no matter what then I take the barrel knot and I slide the barrel knot down to it now it's all nice and snug this can't come out unless it had a full the full length this has to come out of the way so now all, now all things are, three things are together personally I, I probably wouldn't carry this around my neck because it's, it's pretty heavy but I would have this in my in my uh, um, belt bag or something like that or in my you know my shoulder bag or small pack whatever I was carrying with me but then I know I'd have all the stuff I need to easily 
say easily and safely make uh, a fire drill set or do a ferro rod fire anytime I want so I have everything all together with me and if I was out in the camp or whatever then I could I could just put around my neck for you know when I'm going to use it usually around my neck I carry a, um, a Mora Classic it's a nice small light knife or my Mora Eldritch which is also a very 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 nice camp knife I like the the classic better though um, just having a little bit longer handle, a little, little bit longer blade, keeps my knuckles from getting hit. I keep whacking my knuckle. I've had an infection in my knuckle for about a month. It almost gets done. I whack it on a rock or something, cutting something. But that's just something I, I just thought I'd show you. It just how easy it is to have just a little pack of your your most useful tools with you all the time. And uh, I don't know. I, it, it, to me, I just try to keep slightly organized. For my belt kits, I carry, this is my my new fire kit here, I carry this with me, this is the kit that I use, if I want to make a fire, I'll just take stuff out of this right here, and in here I have a lighter for safety, I have a few small pieces of ferro, of uh, uh, fat wood, I have a, in a plastic bag, I have probably four foot of jute twine, some cotton, some loot loot, which is the best stuff for an ember. And I think that's pretty much it. I don't think there's a magnifying. No, there's no magnifying glass in this one here. This is just an, uh, just a regular kit to start a fire whenever you want. I got it in a fairly new Altoids tin. I'm having problems with the inside of the Altoid tin rusting when I have stuff like cotton and loot loot in there then it all gets stuck to it so that's why I'm putting stuff in plastic bags now and then I always carry a ranger band it's not necessary to hold the the tin shut but the the uh, ranger band is good also good tinder and the other thing that I carry all the time no matter what is a ferro rod and I, I mentioned this ferro rod the other day but I didn't take it out and this is a two dollar and fifty cent ferro rod from eBay they sell the exact same ferro rod with the exact same picture of a little Asian hand holding it for like nine or ten dollars and I mean with its own striker nice a nice big handle for the striker it throws a pretty darn good spark for two dollars and fifty cents you know this isn't this isn't a Nathan 4071 fire steel or nothing like that but this is a good this is a good fire steel for your kit you know and this is the kit that I carry whenever I go out if I go out on with my belt my BK2 for a hike or whatever that's the the fire kit that I take with me and again for fire kits like I mentioned before they should either be dedicated where you don't ever touch them unless you need a fire or whatever or like this one right here is different this one right here I use whatever I take out of it I make sure when I come home that night that I replace it and this is just a nice little bag I got off of Lazada which is like the Asian version of Amazon but with just really low quality stuff but this happened to be a pretty nice little bag with a little molly clip on it and a hanging clip on it and I like the the color of it, you know, kind of the army the army color, and it's got a, a decent clip on it. And everything everything fits in it pretty well. So that's just that's what I that's what I carry for a, my everyday fire kit. And the, the my ferro rod can almost come out, but it's but it's still hooked on to the striker in the bottom so I don't think it will come out just make sure I keep the string tucked in real well so it doesn't get snagged probably a better way to carry that but but that's that's my my version of a K2 
cherry fire kits. Nice and small. Weigh, weigh, still weighs about a, not a pound, but maybe a half a pound or something like that. It's pretty heavy, really. But, uh, got a puppy up there complaining about something. Uh, I found this old holster. I don't know where this ever came from. This is like something that you put a a, a big lighter in or something like that, and then it's got a, a a tube on it. I don't know what it what it's for. It's got a, a funny little clip on it. I don't know where I got it at. A garage sale or something like that. But what I do, I put I put fat wooden stuff in here, and I put a little baggie of of cotton and stuff like that, whatever I wanted, jute twine, things like that, and then the loop's just about the right size for my half inch ferrule rod, and put that on there and carry it, I think I, I, think I might have been carrying a, uh, one of the mini bics in here maybe, and jammed the full other, other tender, I don't have it with me though, but there's all, you know, you got all different kinds, I, I liked it because it's leather, I think leather is kind of cooler than all the nylon and you know, fake stuff, but I found that the the bags that I bought off of Lazada so far, I've got three or four packs, several canteen bags and stuff like that. They all wind up ripping, the the zippers split off on them. They're just so low, so low quality, and, and they're actually they're actually getting big money for them. Um, I I wanted to order. A, uh, and I, we buy them because you can get it delivered here. Amazon just started delivering here last year, and then they haven't been delivering now because of this virus nonsense. But I wanted, I saw a video yesterday about a tarp. I don't, I have no idea about the name of it, but it was a 10 by 12 tarp. It looked really nice, had 32 tie outs on it, which I thought would be great for all the different setups and stuff. And it's so nice to have a, some tie outs in the center of it for, you can put a, a string up over a branch or something to make your area so much bigger. Um, but the, the the tarp or the tarp was thirty two thirty two eighty seven or something like that thirty two dollars, and then to ship it to the Philippines and and the see Amazon screwing everybody over here. They're putting all this fake custom fees and stuff like that. There's no custom fees on something like that it's being shipped here, but they're charging thirty. It was thirty-two. It was thirty-two dollars and something for the thing, and it was thirty-three dollars and something just for shipping and custom fees and shipping and handling, which is absolutely ridiculous. But if I want it, I have to pay for it, or I can buy it, send it to someone like my mom or somebody or my brother or sister, and someday when they send me a package, which might not be a month, might be six months, might be a year from now, then that my my item is sitting there all that time. If I order it through Amazon. It does get here. It does get here in about 14 days. It comes priority mail, and it actually gets delivered. The other ones always came by DHL here, which is uh, just a, a van. <laughs> it's not really DHL, but that's what it, that's what it says. And uh, but it's but it's not fair what they're charging for. I want what I can. I've been look. I tell you, I've been looking for a. I've been looking for a, a bushcraft knife, and. Uh, Everyone I click on says not available to send the Philippines. I was looking at ferro rods, and I thought about buying a ferro rod. Uh, I found some nice round ones that were seven and seven point seven point seven four inches long, and some square ones that were eight inches long, which I think would be just perfect. Um, the one with twenty six, twenty five ninety nine, and twenty six ninety nine for the square ones. But everything I clicked says not available to be sent here in the Philippines. Um, I guess I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna probably break down and buy one from Nathan4071. His rods are the best, but they're double that price. And uh, when I went when I got my eight inch or my I got this one here, my three quarter inch rod from Nathan. It was like thirty six dollars or something. I can't remember the price on it. It was pretty high though. But it's a good rod. I mean, it's, there's, at the time, this was the best there was. They had, they just, he just came out with the inch, inch size at the time, and uh, he wanted thirty-eight dollars or something to ship it to the Philippines, which is 
third made thirty four dollars. I, I don't quote me on the price, but it was high, and and it's it's heavy. It's that's what it costs. I, there's, I'm not there's no question in that. Instead of that, I had this sent to my dad because my dad was still alive then, and my dad just put it in one of his boxes and sent it along. It was costing my dad a hundred bucks for a little postal box to send over, but this didn't take up much space, and it didn't matter on the weight. The weight, the price was just one price. But uh, I think what I'll, I'll do, I guess I'll. I was thinking on a, a square one, but I'm having nothing but problem with the high-speed steel striker. So I might just go if I could if I can get a eight-inch rod from Nathan a round one. I don't know if he has those or not. I saw he had some long ones. I think they were square though, the ones I saw the other day. If I can find a round one from him, eight inches long, I might buy a half inch by eight inch. I, I know what I was looking at because I want a I want a half inch square. That's what I want. His squares are all three eighths inch. And uh, the one I saw on Amazon was half inch by eight inches long. And they came in a pair of two for twenty six ninety nine, which really sounded like a pretty good deal. But uh, I have no complaints about this three quarter inch rod from Nathan four zero seven one. It throws wild sparks. I did the six foot challenge with it I threw eight and a half feet no problem I did the six fires in 60 seconds and 45 seconds with no problem at all with it the only problem I'm having with it is with my high-speed steel strikers they're putting all these little chatter marks this one was the worst one it was just huge marks in it skipping marks or whatever and then this is a cheap eBay rod I used this yesterday in a video and in one test because I, I, I found a video where Nathan said keep the rod flat and strike with it flat. And I tried that and I got a whole bunch of chatter marks all over it. So I just had to go to a different striker, I guess, different kind of striker. Maybe back to one of the cheap ones or a hacksaw or something like that. I don't know. But these do throw the best sparks though. But they're just messing up my, my rods. But that's all I got for you. Just thought I'd show you that stuff real quick. The, again, the, for me, having my stuff together is real important. Easy for me to find. I always have it in my bag with me. I know it's there. Then I'd always have a, I'd always have another ferro rod in my pocket or on my belt, and uh, a lighter in my in my belt or my pocket. Like, you're never going to lose your belt. You're never going to lose your pockets. So you might lose your pack somewhere somehow. I don't, I don't know how you could, but you, you might tip over in a canoe or something like that. I have no idea what, what could happen to you. But, um, but always 